Okay, of course, a disclaimer. So everything that we mentioned today is basically based on our own analysis. You know, we really hope uh, you guys uh, really seek uh, all the uh, information again from our ERA salespeople you know, to verify. So this is our disclaimer. So I think before I begin, I just want to show you, this is actually a perspective of Momentum Park. Okay, Momentum Park, this project, if you have not heard it for those who are unaware, basically it's an on-block project, one of the biggest on-block projects over the last 10 years. Okay, so it's a very, very majestic and massive site itself. It has very nice views as you can see. Yeah? Okay, so later I'm going to go a little bit in depth on this itself. Okay, so basically this developer, it's a Kingsford. Okay, so they bought it like 800 over million. It's the biggest on block of all time. So we call this project majestic. Okay, it's the word that we use to describe this project because it is humongous. So if you have been to our show flat, if you've been to our site before, you know, if you go down there, you can see the massiveness of this really mesmerizing project. So a little bit of background info. Okay, this project site area is huge at 600 over 1,000 square feet. Uh, I will pick up the more important points, okay? It is 1,862 units. This makes it the largest project in the RCR segment of Singapore. Okay, I'm going to share with you why, the, why large is a benefit later on. Okay, and also something important that you guys want to take note is that this project, okay, is targeted to TOP on the second quarter of 2020. Two, three, okay, second quarter of 2023, which makes it probably like two years from now. So if you were to buy a project today, a lot of times, sometimes it's four years down the road. You know, even if you buy some BTOs, I know it's like five, six years down the road. But I think for Momentum Park, one of its benefits is that it's going to be uh, TOP in two years time so that you can actually, you know, move in, you can collect rental. So this is an important aspect of it. So I'm going to touch five points, you know, what I deem, you know, as a, a good growth potential for Momentum Park. First, we all know this word called location. But the thing is this, this word itself, we all understand as location, location, location. But what about location? First, we must understand, is this location in a growth location? So for those who understand, we're actually in the RCR segment of Singapore, the rest of core region, right? So the red color is what we call the CCR, which is our core central region, followed by our RCR, which is highlighted in yellow, and then, of course, we have the outside core region, which is the lighter yellow. So you can see we are actually basically in the Queenstown planning area itself for Momentum Park. Okay, this is the site itself. Okay, we are down here, very near Kenridge Park. So what about RCR? Okay, why is it important? Because a lot of times investors ask me, you know, my clients also ask me, like, so, so where should I invest? And what, what, what difference does it make? You know, RCR, OCR, I don't understand. Can you give me a little bit of uh, you know, knowledge and understanding? Why should I even look at RCR? Okay, why? This is very important. RCR is actually very near town. So important thing is this, when you buy a property, next time I believe one day you want to resell it. One day you just want to resell it away. So you have to think of what is our exit strategy. So sometimes if you look at overseas property, be it Malaysia, be it China, you know, be it uh, 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 Australia, sometimes, you know, our, my clients always ask me, Alex, you know, how many kilometers is this away from the city? Okay, they'll ask me this question. I was like, when I was a junior, they asked me, well, what do you mean by how many kilometers? I mean, you know, this is the area I'm in Queenstown. So I didn't understand that basically the proximity to town is very, very important. Okay, there's a Chinese saying, you know, my Chinese customer always ask me, hey, Alex, this, this project, you know, how many kilometers? Oh, then you have to tell me, is this Ling Kong Li? Well, I say, well, what is Ling Kong Li? What's the meaning of Ling Kong Li? Zero kilometers. So, so I start to understand, okay, a lot of times investors, they always look at how near is it to town? So this is basically, the mental part is basically approximately 5.8 to 6 kilometers to our heart of our CBD central itself. So when investing, remember, sometimes when we want to sell to the next buyer, they will also have this same mindset. Okay, they want properties that are near town. Okay, so this is important for you to take note. That's why I always tell some of my agents, you know, if you want to invest, if given the chance, if given the budget, always go as near to town as possible, right? If you can afford Lincoln Lee, that's the best, all right? Lincoln Lee can be your Raffles Place, your Orchard Road, your Marina. That's what I call zero kilometers. So this is important. So Nomenda Park is down here. We're probably around, yep, six kilometers away 
from the core central region. Okay, so these are small tips, and but are very, very important tips because we as investors, next time, you know, this is where we're going to sell and this is the understanding where the next buyer, okay, one to understand what is the meaning of all this, okay? So the facts, of course, is down here, right? Today, we are at this star down here. Okay, so it's seven to 10 minutes drive, probably down to a uh, Vivo, Harbourfront, 10 minutes to a uh, CBD, 10 minutes also to Holland Village, Dempsey, you know, 11 minutes to Orchard. Of course, to the uh, second CBD, Jurong areas is 11 minutes, down to uh, NUS, three to five minutes. So we are right in the heart of the action, okay? So these are the facts itself. And next, just right next to this development, Momentum Park, is actually this place called the Science Park. It's just next door, okay? So it's like just across the road. And of course, there's access, you know, right from Momentum Park down to this, you know, uh, Cambridge Park itself, okay? Which is a uh, 5 million square feet of uh, grid. So this is a, a bonus for the, okay? So this is the location for those who are not aware, yeah? For Momentum Park. And below the Bentham Park nearby is where, you know, even our, you know, Prime Minister has mentioned over and over again. This whole area in blue, where I actually circled in red, is called the Greater Southern Waterfront. So this place has lots and lots of potential. Okay, this whole place is going to be developed very soon. And from here, you know, it will actually push up property prices. So sometimes my investors tell me, so, you know, a lot of times I have to learn from my investors as well, right? So if you want to be rich and wealthy like our investors, you know, I have to learn from them. So they always tell me, Alex, if you want to buy something, you have to buy in a growth location. There must be transformation around the area. If there's no transformation, then our prices will be stagnant. So then where would Momentum's Park transformation be? The biggest transformation will be Greater Southern waterfront itself okay which is just nearby okay for the next to five to ten years okay you guys also know the pot will be moved over okay most of it have been moved over already but to clear up everything pro probably another five to ten years this whole place will be a super growth location you know and what we call mega waterfront prestige okay this whole place itself will be six times the size of marina bay can you imagine this is absolutely absolutely amazing right this is so big and of course you know they're going to have more than nine thousand, you know homes going to be built over at this uh you know capital club itself right so the lease will be end uh, very soon uh, december this year from there it will redevelop okay into waterfront properties so these properties down here okay are definitely highly sought after prices can be trust me, can even cross 3,000 per square foot, okay? So on average, maybe 2,007 to even 3,007. So these whole areas, okay, is where the action is going to be, okay? So take note of this. So that's why when we buy something, we need to buy somewhere where it's this word called transformation. We must always understand that. Next, second important thing, when we buy a property, okay, yes, some of you may think, hey, I may be buying for own state, but also remember, most of us are also investors, right? So there's two, basically two groups of people. So if you want to buy the location of demand, you have to buy the location whereby we have high rentability, okay? So the uh, Momentum Park itself, okay, it's very near Cambridge next to Science Park 1, Science Park 2, the One North area, and also the NUS area. Okay, I'm going to show you how it actually affects rental. Okay, so NUS itself, uh, we're very proud, you know, as a Singapore, you know, as a Singaporean, you know, our NUS actually ranked the top university in Asia 2020. Okay, so it's ranked number one. So what it means is this, when it's ranked number one, you will see that there's a lot of people, you know, flocking into these areas, right? So the school itself, it houses more than 50,000 students and staff. Yes, mostly there will be staff looking to rent, you know, nearby right now because they come from their country, they're going to, you know, they are, they are professors, they are you know, lecturers at NUS, they actually want to stay around this area. So we are very, very near to the NUS side. Okay, so uh, we are down here. Let me see where we are. This black portion down here, this is Momentum Park. For those who cannot see, maybe you want to zoom in in a little bit. Yeah? So black is down here. The NUS is just like three to five minutes drive away. Okay, not only that, your potential tenants will also come from Science Park 1 and Science Park 2, which is just, a, I, don't, I don't know, you call it a rollerblade away or a cycle away. You don't even need to take any transport. It's just next door. And of course, to the north of it, you have your one north media police and also a very big you know, business city, which is Maple Business City, down towards the uh, southwest, southeast of uh, Momentum Park. Okay, so this whole area down here. Okay, so this blue is all your 
future greater southern waterfront. Yeah? So this is actually where your tenant mix will come from here. people say hey Alex I want it to be right next to the MRT okay true okay there are potentially a uh, good uh, locations near the MRT but you must also understand if you are that near or on top of the MRT you're definitely going to pay a premium for it okay and I always tell my clients if you were to look at Momentum Park okay the tenants are basically staying right next door okay these people they would rent Nomentum Park versus, you know, traveling, trying to rent somewhere, I don't know, down in, in Queenstown, Red Hill, rent or not. So, at the end of the day, these are where your tenant mix comes from. Okay, so this is very, very important. And we do not have any competition in this area. So, this is solely for Nomentum Park and only. Because at the end of the day, if they want to rent other places, they're going to travel down to, you know, uh, Interlace, they have to travel down to uh, Capo area, or maybe they have to travel north towards Queenstown, Red Hill. Instead, they can actually just walk back home. So, right, this is a place that is really, really lack of what supply in terms of uh, potential uh, leases. Okay, so they will actually come over from these places. Okay, so Science Park 1 and Science Park 2 is like our Silicon Valley, right? So the star is actually, uh, again, Momentum Park. The one in orange is Science Park 1 and the one in blue, okay, Science Park 2. Okay, so this whole area basically will bring you very, very good high profile tenant okay they are not the you know normal tenants are they are the high profile willing to pay kind of tenants huh? so as you can see many many brands are, but i'm not sure which brand you know maybe you all know uh, fj benjamin dyson shopee you know the rest probably are a lot of technological companies right we also do have uh bridgestone uh, at&t you know we have some uh, news uh, thompson uh, reuters so there are many many companies more than 300 multinational local businesses down here end of the day, what this means is this, all these places will have expatriates, right? So they employ a lot of staff, not only expatriate, but people that probably stay uh, further up north or in the east. They, if they work nearby there, they probably want to rent a place there so it's nearer to their workplace as well, okay? So this is its potential. And of course, for One North itself, okay, it's a media police, so a lot of uh, workspace, again, so government actually... Uh, what we call encourage what we call work live and play so in this whole area itself currently there's only one project there if not it will like overflow you know down to a momentum park itself as well okay fifty thousand workers down there okay biomedical hub we have our info hub media hub and uh, science and engineering so this whole place itself again supplies a steady pool of tenants so guys not to worry because you see the momentum park at the end of the day you know we own, we own let's say a unit there okay if you own one unit there there's so many tenants there for you to to you know look at okay so we have a very very big pool of tenant mix okay and of course for one of itself okay the different brands maybe this is a bit more familiar uh, PNG of course the big ones like Shell they're all down there Unilever okay this again are uh, bringing very good quality tenants huh? you have your gsk you know grab is all nearby okay so these companies are all in the one north area okay but i also like to have to show you another one maple tree business city a lot of times maybe even myself agents now we also overlook there's even more tenants down there even bigger brands okay i'm going to show you who are the brands down there the big brands are down here Google, you know, Nike, uh, your vaccines probably come from here. Huh? Okay, your Infocom, Samsung, SAP. They are very big, big companies down there. And if you really look into the details, ladies and gentlemen, if you really travel down there, you will not see any big projects down there. The nearest they have currently, okay, is Interlace. Only one, only one project. The rest, they are all small projects down there. Okay, so this again, you know, I really, I have friends staying at Pasir Banja. They always tell me their places are always fully packed. Okay, even small projects, big projects, need not to say, even more tenants. Okay, so this is something that you want to look at. Moving forward, okay, there's also going to be a Dover Knowledge District. This is another new initiative by the government, right? So there's a media. So now they talk about knowledge. Wow. So knowledge is academic, you know, research institution. Again, this is under construction. So they're going to create more and more exciting jobs, bringing in more and more people again okay so this is all its potential and of course as a salesperson myself right i have to also as an investor look even deeper okay look even deeper what is the potential again right these are already existing so if you look deeper into the master plan look at the master plan okay i know it's a bit complicated you may see a lot of circles right now eh? but let me just uh 
summarize this for you. This is basically the master plan. Okay, so Momentum Park itself is down here on the, on the south of it, right? you can see. And all the blue colored are actually commercial land parcels, okay? So all these blue colors are all your Science Park 1, Science Park 2, and on top is all your One North, okay? So all these words that I circled is called subject to detailed planning. So all this subject to detailed planning only means what? These places will definitely have commercial buildings. It's just that it's not being built yet, okay? So again, you know, with all these commercial and excitement and businesses, you know, Singapore is encouraging businesses to come to Singapore. This, again, is just a short walk uh, across to the Mendon Park. So all this is not yet there. Uh, so it's going to be what we call potential. Uh, so we must understand and analyze its potential. Okay, so I think this is going to be a, a very big thing uh, moving forward. Okay, and also I look even deeper. Okay, again, Momentum Park's master plan, you look at it very, very carefully. Okay, there's actually two future new roads under this master plan. Okay, it is not in sales brochures. Uh, this is what you're going to do research. Okay, so you look into master plan, you can actually see uh, these yellow dotted lines down here. It's actually an underground road and they're connected to South Buena Vista. Moving forward, it's going to be an easy access down to greater southern waterfront, okay? So this future road, we do not know when it's going to build yet. It depends to, on SLA. Yeah? So it's going to be underground. So it's going to be below Ken uh, Ridge Park, okay? So again, this creates convenience, right? It creates convenience to what we call you know, potential tenants for those who are traveling by, you know, driving or, you know, they want to grab. Uh, these are all shortcuts, okay? And another road, okay, which is going to cut through uh, what we call the uh, Winchester landed areas all the way, you know, to Alexander Road. And this, again, will connect to Maple Business, right? Maple Tree Business City, uh, where Google, Nike, uh, they're all down there. So again, accessibility. So all this, again, is potential because why do I say it's potential? Because it's not there yet, right? So then that's why it's potential. If it's there, means it's already facts already, okay? So this is what is up and coming that maybe, maybe, just maybe it's overlooked by a lot of investors, okay? So I just want to highlight all this to you. Okay, so this is what we call, you know, a potential. Of course, the third thing I want to highlight to you is what I call a big project advantage because a lot of times clients come to me and say, Alexa, this project is so big, so big. You know, there's so much supply. How am I going to rent it out? Okay, so let's look at it in this direction. Okay, because this project, okay, is huge. They have their benefits, okay? You must remember there isn't any competition for Nomadon Park itself. If you really drive around the area, if you are a tenant there, just take note, if you are a tenant there, you can really drive around. Where would you rent? Seriously, there isn't any big projects for you to rent. You're going to travel out of the location. Okay, so what is the benefits for big projects? First benefit, you can see we have more than 100 lifestyle facilities. Okay, with all these facilities, what kind of benefit does it show? Okay, it shows that it can actually like, attract potential tenants. Yes, you're right. Okay, attract potential tenants because Tenants just want to enjoy facilities, right? They're going to pay the same dollars that they want a community. They want to experience a new, you know, higher tech uh, environment. So they will basically rent places with big facilities. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Uh. More than 100 facilities. I can't go through everything. Uh. Two tennis courts, you know, we have a half basketball court, you know, 150 meters, you know, pool, you know, 100 meters pool. This is absolutely very long. Uh. If connected, it's like 250 meters already. Okay, very big. Okay, you have a lot of bicycle lots. And of course, the landscape is like 80%, right? So, so the buildings only stand on 20% of the land. Okay, so this is what actually attracts tenant to rent this place. Okay, so let me analyze a little bit more in depth. Okay, let's look at our com competitors, okay? So our competitors, example, the interlace, which is actually completed in 2013. It's probably like uh, eight years now, right? Eight years. It is also a big project, right? Because sometimes we say big, uh, how does big, uh, what kind of benefits does it bring? Okay, because it's big, guys, you must understand something. Because it's big, th then there is a lot of marketing, then, you know, tenants would know about this place. Imagine today you are going to overseas and work, okay? Will you hear, will you even consider a small project to stay long-term? You may not because why? Safety is number one, right? More people or less people, right? Safety is number one. Number two, maybe you have a friend that has rented there before and say, hey, this place is not bad. You want to try it out. So in 
a big project, you basically have this kind of what referral recurring tenants because of word of mouth marketing. Okay, so bigness itself, the icon itself actually attracts people. And it and this uh, uh Nomentum Park, it is the largest project in Asia. So no one can miss it. One so it is gonna be the highlight, you know, once it TOPs. Okay, so anyway, let's come back to the thing again. Huh? Interlace 1040 units, huh? It's average two bedrooms rental is also giving it like three two to four three. So on average, if you look at Momentum Park, easily, okay, easily we'll be able to get three two. Uh, very conservative, uh, to probably even three eight. Okay, so this one depends on your furnishing, depends on which level, depends on your, you know, how you design your place. Uh, okay, so but on average, you can see it's rental. You be it a two room, three or four room, it's hovering around three point three percent. Okay, so this is. I think very good you in the Singapore context. Uh, okay, if you're going to buy some CCR places, uh, you may not get this you as well. Okay, so I think three, it's very, very good rental already. Okay, one north itself, which is also nearby, okay, maybe a medium sized project, 400 units. Also, its rental you is hovering at 3.5 on average. Okay, so they have one bedroom there, two bedrooms, and three bedrooms. So if I, if Momentum Park one bill, I think easily okay you can get two thousand five and above okay easily okay so so this is how you can uh, determine what kind of rental you'll be getting okay so let's compare a little bit more huh? so we do have big projects uh down nearer downtown okay Reflection Caribbean you can see they are also big projects because they are one thousand over units nine hundred over units huh? also hovering around three over percent huh? Okay, see 1,000 over units, also 3 over percent. These are the bigger project, medium-sized project. Okay, so you see yeah, there isn't those small projects. Uh, you can see uh, all these are big size and near nearby what we call the mental part. Right? We have uh, Clementi, we have uh, West Coast, uh, we have uh, Dover, Clementi again. So you can see they're all hovering more than 3%. So imagine today, okay, if you're working at Science Park area, one of area, where would you rent? Okay, seriously, this project will you know absorb most of the tenant even before the tenant go and explore somewhere else. Okay, so take note of this. And also a big project, you know, has a benefit, what we call low maintenance fee. Okay, this is something very important as well. We look at investment. You can see the one room, two rooms are uh, 200 over dollars uh, in terms of maintenance fee. Sometimes if you look at smaller projects. You know, no choice because of the small quantity, you will have maintenance fee, they'll be hitting four, five hundred dollars. And that will eat into your what? Your expense. It is an expense, uh, guys. It's not it's not a benefit. I mean, that's an expense. So every dollar you can save, you save, right? So be it a, a big or small project, you have to compare looking at the maintenance fee as well. Even for the four bedrooms, it's only three hundred dollars. I think easily if you go downtown a little bit, a four bedroom maintenance fee can easily be five to seven hundred dollars. Okay, so in a big project, you basically pay lesser maintenance fee. So this is the emphasis I want to mention. Okay, and also they say, then what about price? What about price? You know, next time so many people to sell, then how are we going to compete with them? Guys, let me share with you a tip, a secret. Okay, it is because it is a big project. That's why you are able to achieve a higher price. I say again, you know, it's because of a big project. That's why you're able to achieve a higher selling price. I understand you would say, hey, Economics is about demand and supply. But take note, in this project itself, in big projects, it's not about demand and supply. Okay, it's about transactions. Whenever today, just imagine you are the owner of a big project. Okay, and then you, you see your neighbor sell $1 million. Naturally, how much do you want to sell? In your heart, you will say, hey, definitely want to sell $1 million or maybe slightly right? higher, right? Maybe just, just that slight higher. So when there's this thing, there's transactions. And that's why prices get higher and higher in big projects. Okay, so how do I prove that? You can take a look at Interlace again. Okay, over a period of 10 years, huh? let's not be biased. We take same time frame, same location. Okay, Interlace itself, bigger projects over the past 10 years on average, okay, increased by approximately 22%, right? Of course, they can be much higher, right? And also, this is what we call average 22%. But let's look at other projects surrounding this area. Similar time frame for Foresta, okay, and among Faber area, for example, smaller development, okay, 141 units, uh, newer development, but their prices did not really go up, okay, because 
they are only what 141 units. So very, very little transactions to push prices up. Okay, same time frame. Huh? Also look at Viva Vista, uh, nearby Pasir Panjang, 144 units as well. It was pretty stagnant over the past 10 years because, ladies and gentlemen, it's a small project. Really, honestly, it's not about location really. I can give you the same location, but we have a different result. Okay, Skyline Residences, 201 units. Also, luckily, you know, it still uh, went up a little bit, but three over percent. Okay, so this is why, you know, I would like to say if today you have the money, okay, if you want to invest, okay, not gamble, if you want to invest, you know, basically you must know where the price will be heading. So today, if given a choice, please buy big, really. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, it is safety. Lah, okay? if, you want to, if you want to buy something small, you must understand what you're buying into. Okay? I'm not saying it's not good. I'm just saying that you must understand the product. Okay? If you don't understand, you just want to be safe, go for big because you won't go too wrong. Okay? So this is something that you can actually look at. Okay? Something for you, a thinker for you. Eh? And number four, when you buy something, you have to buy something which has a unique identity. It has to be different. It has to be something that that you know, has that allure and appeal for the next generation, the next buyer, the next purchaser. It has to be unique. It cannot be something same, right? So what is the uniqueness of Momentum Park itself? So Momentum Park, okay, it is surrounded by nature. This is 5 million square feet of Kenwich Park, okay, just beside, so you get free oxygen. Every morning, you have free oxygen. Every night, okay, you have carbon dioxide. But from there, it's a 10 kilometers walk, you know, down, you know, all the way to a hot park and also a vivo city. So this is a nature reserve itself. So it's conserved. Of course, nearby you have your West Coast Park, your Labrador. But I think the highlight for Momentum Park is Kenridge Park. So when I was actually talking to some of our ex-owners, you know, they actually bought back, you know, then, you know, sometimes we just want to ask, you know, so why are you to buy back? Say, because Alex, where can you find a project that is right next to such a big park. Every morning is free gardens, free for you. I say, why free? Because it's maintained by the government. So it's free, right? So it's maintained by the government, but you're staying like staying in the park. I was like, wow. Okay, so I'm learning all this from my clients. Now, okay, so this is how they actually tell us. This is the kind of passion that they have for this project. So even ex-owners are buying back this project because of its uniqueness. Okay, all this land, Singapore is very scarce, okay? If you are right next to a park, next time it's going to be very, very valuable, okay? So take note, uh, it's going to be very, very valuable, okay? Just another tip since you are down here listening, okay, just to share with you, uh, Momentum Park is basically sitting on top, okay? On top, it's approximately 100 over, you know, uh, 100 over meters above sea levels, you know? So it's like sitting on top of a hill. So this is Kenridge Park. So if you go down, now itself, you know, can drive past uh, Pasir Panjang, you will take a look. It's going to be a massive project. Okay, so again, uh, these are the park. Uh, so this is the starting point, end point, right? So this is a 10 meter walk. So you can enjoy basically the greens. Okay, so, uh, the Mount Faber, Tolblanga Hill, Hot Park, Kenridge, Labrador. So they're all what we call the southern region. So it's all connected. Okay, so all this is where you can actually explore. You know, you can just uh, go in the morning or in the evening. So health is important. Uh, so oxygen is also expensive. So I think you stay here, stay near here. I think it's a good thing. Okay. And also importantly, the design concept. Okay. Because it's near the greens. Okay. So the architects actually designed this project inspired by the Amazon. Okay. Because why it is green. So they want to actually embrace these greens and say, hey, how can I develop a project, you know, that looks like that, you know, that has greens and, and near greens, you know, how are we going to incorporate this design? Okay. So basically it is a, uh, designed uh, where it's going to be what? Uh, doing a lot of uh, greens. They're going to be building this project in right in the heart of the green. So you can take a look at this. Huh? So basically, they're building a home right in the heart of the greens. Okay, so and in the middle of it, uh, there is the Amazon. Uh, so we always say either you face the greens or you face the Amazon River. Uh, so they actually developed a, a develop this, uh, constructed this, Amazon River right in the heart of the development itself. Okay, so you can see this whole thing. Uh, does it uh, represent something like, like somewhere in Hong Kong? Uh, what we call sun, what, sun, sun thing, right? Uh, yes, it's because it's right above the hill. You can see all these are all greens. And nothing will be built here because these are all 
you know, uh, conserved. Okay, so this is something important for you to take note. Okay, so the design again, uh, you can see the artist drawing, uh, the developers, architects drawing, all these are like the Amazon River. So the design mimics the Amazon River. So this is 100 meters of uh, swimming pool, another 150 meters of swimming pool. Okay, and for those who have kids, good. They have a very big kids pool down here. I'm not sure if you can see it. Huh? It's a very big kids pool. If I'm not wrong, it's approximately near 50 meters. Huh? I mean, I have never seen such a big kids pool before. Okay, so this is a very, very big pool itself. Okay, so this is uh, the uniqueness that you can have. Okay, so I'm going to show you again, you know, it's already surrounded, huh? surrounded by all this Kenridge Park. I didn't know there's a Kenridge Park pond down here until I you look at this project. Huh? So sometimes huh, this is how we look at it. Okay, this is a science park, okay, towards the uh, northwest. And there are a lot of landed properties down here owned by the government, black and white. So I'm going to show you later some perspective. Huh? So this is how it looks like. Either it faces southwards towards the green or it faces north, huh, which is looking at one north area. Okay, so at night, either it, so at night, so either it faces the greens or it faces the Amazon River. Well, so I always describe this as the Amazon River. River. So this is how big it looks like, 150 meters. Okay, so the kids' pool is down here. Okay, uh, its second story is basically down here. It's elevated 18.8 meters. So second floor is as good as you know seven floor already, seven to eight story. So second floor starts here, all the way to 24th story, and on top of that, there's a beacon of light. So at night everybody will be able to see this project, okay? Because it will illuminate at night, okay? So second floor all the way to 24th story, okay? We have a total of nine blocks itself. So isn't this amazing? So either it faces the Amazon River or it faces this, this view. This is just, you know, I just can't describe really. Uh, this is just too nice really, okay? So a lot of units, right? We do have a, a series of one bedrooms to five bedrooms. And also we have a uh, strata houses. Uh, today, uh, I think ERA just sold one strata house. Okay, and then we have uh, some commercial shops. Okay, so there, there'll be some, maybe f &B depends on who buys it. So it's also for sale, right? So we have shops for sale, uh, strata houses for sale, one bedroom to five bedrooms. Okay, so all of the units down here, okay, the main selling point that I want to highlight, the unique selling point, uh, USP, is that all units have a view. Okay, all units have a view. So what kind of view does it actually have? Okay. This is the view from the north. Isn't this wonderful? North facing, it has a totally unblocked view. So at the right hand corner, if you're lucky, you get to see some Marina Bay. Uh, MBS is down here, all right on the right. And of course, uh, on the left, you actually have to see Bukit Timah Hill. Okay, so this is the view facing the north. Okay, so if you select certain units, you will be able to see this view. Okay, so from second floor all the way to 24th floor. So this is the north facing. For those who like the north facing, uh, type, uh, I don't know if you, you can type, type north. Uh, you can type like not, never mind. Huh? So it's either it faces the north or it faces the west where you actually get the sunset down here. Okay, it's a very nice sunset view down here. For those who are staying in the west coast area, in the blue horizon, things like that, you know, you basically can see that the, there's going to be very nice sunset down here. And this is Science Park itself. So you can see how near is it to the Mountain Park. Just a stone throw away. So, you know, you can, uh, whether you can skate, scoot, I'm not sure. You can cycle back home. You can walk back home. Uh, you don't even need to take the transport. Uh, this is the main highlight of this view itself. Okay, so, so Science Park is down here. And of course, views from the south, one of my favorite views, right? South facing. All this will be cleared within the next five years and you will have a very nice sea view, okay? And along all this, you will have more waterfront properties. And not to worry, all these waterfront properties this, it will not block your view because the way the government designs it is going to be like step down. Okay, so the way they design it is like it's going to get shorter and shorter when you reach the, the, the coastline. Okay, so this is how it's going to look like. So all this is you can get sea view. Of course, the lower floors, you will still be able to see all your greenery views. Okay, so I think most of our sea views are, I think the bigger units are still available, but the small units, maybe it's uh, not that available. You probably got to check with our salespeople. Okay, so, so if you like this view, it is the south facing. Okay, now one of my favorite facings is the east. This faces the east view. Okay, so the east, this is a totally unblocked landed property views, okay, of Winchester. You have a lot of black and white British colonial bungalows down here. Okay, so if you're on the low floors, maybe you cannot see the bungalow, but you will see 
vast greeneries. But of course, on the higher floors, you get, get to see a little bit of uh, the roofs, uh, the houses. And of course, you have a nursery down here. There's some of our Singapore trees are all or plants. Uh, they're all planted from here. So Singapore have a nursery, you don't know, right? I'm also not quite sure. I just knew it. Uh. So you have a nursery down here. Okay, this is a carriage park. And of course, uh, further down to the east, this is uh, where your maple city is, maple business city, maple tree business city, uh, Vivo City interlace. And on the extreme left, if you're lucky, you get to see some Marina Bay views. Okay, so on the high floors, yes, you get to see some city. You know, this is a uh, city views, uh, and of course, Marina Bay on the left itself. So this is absolutely amazing mesmerizing okay, we still have these views available okay so if you like this view please uh, reach out to your sales people okay or ERE people definitely they'll be able to, to, to help you select the right view you want okay so again invest in uniqueness okay you must find something that's unique either it faces outside or it faces the Amazon reverse so this project itself I think it achieved this uniqueness okay and my last point end of the day most important, we always talk about price, price, price. You know, we can talk so much, but at the end of the day, why? Why is there even price growth potential in this area? So for those who are in the market, good. For those who are not, maybe I'm going to share with you what is happening over the past two months. Okay? Over the past two months, the momentum Park, whether you know it or not, okay, it has sold over 720 units in just two months. Okay? To put things in perspective, 720 units is as good as selling out three condominiums in two months. Okay, three normal size condominiums in two months. And that's why over the last month, you will keep hearing, you know, ministers talking about cooling measures and things like that. So take note, okay, I believe there will be cooling measures if prices continue to go up. So take note because why? We never know when it comes. But at the end of the day, okay, but we must know what is happening in the market today. Okay, so on average, you know, its price is selling for 1750 per square foot. Okay, but this doesn't mean anything. It only means something if there's something you can compare to, right? 1007, some may say, oh, well, it's very expensive. Some will say, oh, this is cheap. Cheap or expensive, I think it's not for me to say. It is when you compare it, then you will know what is the meaning of affordable, whether is it expensive, whether is it cheap. So what kind of comparables do we look at? So at the RCR, okay, we have other things. So we pluck a little bit from the rest of the other locations so that we have a bird's eye view, okay, of what is happening in the market. So as example, places like Uptown Ferrer, okay, District 8 itself, average prices are also 1,008 to 2,001. Okay, uh, 1,008 to 2,001. Uptown Ferrer, Ferrer Road area, okay, so Ferrer Park area. Woodley, for those who are familiar, Potong Pase, uh, Potong Pase, 1,009 to 2,004. These are their prices today, okay? Not yesterday, uh, today's prices. And of course, you have Park Colonial again in the Potobasi area, also averaging 1,009 to on the high side, 2,001. Okay, these are figures that we plug not from our location, no matter Park, but from the RCR segment of Singapore. Also, if you look at nearby, okay, nearer to the Bukitima areas, uh, also the RCR, Mayfair Gardens, also 1,009 to 2,000, Daintree, 1,006 to 2,009, Okay, view at Kismis, 1007-1008. Mayfair Modern, this is all in the King Albert Park area, you know, for those who are familiar. Okay, also 1009-2001. Forret, Bukit Tima, near the uh, Signature Park areas, you know, near Beauty World, 1009-2001. Verdale, also in around the same area, also around on average, you know, 1007-1008. So this whole area, again, averages from 1009 per square foot. Okay, so of course, we pull out data and charts from our own research. Huh? So you can see over the past few years, this orange line represents the RCR prices. Okay, RCR, huh? so the rest of core region, is averaging at 2,000 per square foot, ladies and gentlemen. 2,000 per square foot. Okay, if you look at the outside core region, the suburban areas is 1,003. And of course, the core central region, 2,007 but we only can take comparable RCR. So averaging is already 2,000 per square foot. 2,000 per square foot. So we also draw out charts because we also want to compare with our clients because we are also investors. We want to compare with everywhere around us. Okay, so in the district 2, 3, and 5, okay, you can look at be it Skyverton or nearby Sterling, you know, Avenue South, they're all going 1,009, 2,000 per square foot. 
One Pearl Bank, Riviera 2004-2006, Landmark 2001, Carriage Park, which is near us as well, is 1008. So these places are nearer, nearer to us. But our prices are averaging at 1007 plus a bit. Okay, so of course you pull out places, uh, Potong Pasir areas, you see, all oh, 1009, you know, 1000, okay, 2004 for East Coast areas. Okay, if you look at the, again, District 21, uh, Bukit Timah areas, oh, 1008, 1009, you know, 1007. So this is how we compare. So at 1007, guys, if you would enter at this price, you would know where your potential upside is already. Okay, you would know your potential upside already. Okay, so when we when we buy something, this is what is in my mind always. I always have this like, like you know, rainbows and, and circles. Are. So the first circle is the core central region, right? Your orchard, Marina Bay. So as mentioned, the averaging is like 2007. Okay, this, this is the core central. With the budget, of course, this is the core central. If not, it's going to be rest of core region, right? So it's going to be 2000 averaging per square foot. But today, no momentum park is only averaging at 1007. Whether you see it or not, it is the truth. Okay, this is happening right now. And of course, the outside, you know, central region, it's 1003 per square foot. So if you look at no momentum park, 1007, that's why I can say we are pretty much undervalued, probably by 10 to 15 percent. Okay, really, probably 10 to 15 percent. So can I say, okay, anything below 2000 is below market value? Okay, so this is the truth. These are the facts, okay? So for those who enter, then you know where your upside is, okay? We don't want to be the, the person that buy the highest price, right? Now. We want to buy something that is low, uh, and that's always in everybody's mind. So for those, okay, a little bit more tips, uh, because since uh, you're down here, I want to share with you. For the past two weeks, okay, 80% of our sales are all our one and two bedrooms, 80%, because they're moving very fast. There are our investors that are going to buy, and our small, uh, uh, young families are buying two bedrooms, okay? So we also like to compare. So if you compare one bedroom today, today we still have, as of today, one bedroom at 926,000, okay? Once you miss this, sorry, it disappears forever, okay? So one chance only 926. This is the entry level for the one bedroom. And if you compare to any other projects that is near us, whether it's Sterling, the entry level is 1 million. Avenue South, 1.1 million. Landmark near 1.1, 1.1, 1.1 as well. So you can see, uh, we cannot enter these locations at 900 over 1,000 already. So if you are looking for a one bedroom, I think Momentum Park today, you know, is really, really affordable. Okay, take more time to go and look into it. Okay, what about the two bedrooms? Again, we like to pull out our neighbors and competitors. Okay, so Momentum Park, Starting price today, as of today, we still have 1.13 million. Two bedrooms, huh? okay, 1.13 million. If you look at Park, Park Clematis at Clementi, this is outside core. It's not the rest of core. Outside core. Today, it's already 1.19 million already. Okay, Sterling, sorry, 1.3 onwards. Kenrich, 1.3. Avenue South, 1.3 plus million. Landmark, 1.4 plus. One per bank, of course, 1.7. So you can see the two bedrooms. Why are our two bedrooms selling? It's because of the price, period. Okay, you think this will be 900 over 1,000? Sorry, no chance ready, right? So prices will only go up. So if you are looking for two bedroom, affordable two bedroom, unique, you know, you want to stay in a place whereby you know there's potential growth, momentum park is the key. Okay, so this is also some of our sales result. Okay, why is important? I want to show you certain things that are very fascinating to me. Okay, you can see most of our two bedrooms are all in the blue color. You can see they start selling from top down. Uh, okay, most of them start selling from top down. You can see uh, they sell the higher floor first and then the lower floors. Higher floor first, lower floors. Why is this phenomenon? Basically, when you buy a property, when you look at properties, usually they start from bottom up, usually. Uh, because budget, uh, low floor is always cheaper. So you buy right, buy right. But there are phenomenon of high floor selling first. Because why? Momentum Park, just to share, your, share with you a secret, okay? It's per level jump is very, very small. Sometimes only a few thousand dollars. So when you see this kind of difference, example, I'll just give you an example. Sometimes uh, sec, uh, one story difference is only five, six thousand dollars only. So if it's that minute, that small, guys, go for the higher floors, okay? But of course, if the jump is like, oh, 10, 20, 30,000, then of course that one, you probably want to take the lowest floors for investment. Okay, so this is why there's this phenomenon that our higher floors are selling faster, okay? So this is something that you probably want to look at 
and when you explore the momentum part. Okay, so again, uh, in summary, the one bedroom starts from 9xx, two bedroom 1.1 plus. For those who are looking for the three bedrooms onwards, you know, we also draft out this uh, whole comparable for you. So when you have time, you know, you can sit down with our ERA salespeople. We will show you, okay, just one last example for the three bedrooms, 1.4 million. Okay, 1.4 plus million. You look at Avenue South, 1.7. Everything else, 2 over million. Sterling, 1.8 onwards. Huh? Bukit Tima, District 21, all 1.7, 1. 1.9. Maybe a Verde, 1.5. Okay, you have to go probably to uh, Penrose, Pie Star. Maybe you can get 1.4 plus. Okay, Clementi, 1.4 plus. Whistler Grand, or 1.7, which is West Coast area. Okay, so you can see three bedrooms, 1.4 plus very difficult to get it. So at no matter park, you know, it's still at its very, very low entry price. Okay, so when you to buy something, you must buy low. Don't overpay for it. Okay, so I think this is what sums up, you know, my five, you know, growth potential analysis. Okay, so remember location, how many, what's the, how many kilometers from town is important. Huh? Whether is it one kilometer or is it 10 kilometers makes a difference. The rentability, of course, where the tenants come from is unique identity, right? The Amazon River, the uh, Kenridge Park, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the basically the, uh, the design of it, okay? So this is its unique feature. It has to be big, right? Because big in safety, big in the transactions, right? Pushes prices up. And last but not least, okay, we got to enter at the right price, okay? On average, RCI is already going at 2000 Today, you still can get, huh? you still can get on average 1,006 per square foot to 1,007 for the lower floors. Huh? Lower floors, you can still get 1,006 plus per square foot. And guys, you miss this, I think you'll miss it forever. Okay, so these are the few benefits that I think, you know, can make, can make you really, you know, enter the market, you know, by buying it safely. Okay, so I think with that, you know, I think I've ended my session. I think I'm going to pass over to the bigger man himself. Okay, so I think I'm going to invite uh, Mr. Jack Chua. He's basically the CEO of an APAC Realty and also ERA Singapore. I think we want to get more, you know, wisdom from him. You know, he's our mentor. He's my mentor and I think uh, we want to hear from him. So, uh, Mr. Jack Chua, are you ready for this, sir? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you, Alex. So my, my, I'm going to cover this topic. Is there still a strong demand in the market? Okay. So I, I believe that all of you have heard about the property market is very hot. Is it really true? Is it the market is very hot? Okay. First, I mean, we, we have some good factor that i like to share with you. Okay. Number one, will low interest rate affect the property market? Everyone know that now the interest rate is really very, very low. I must say that it's quite historical low. As you can see the charge at your left, okay? The Singapore sharp fall in Singapore cyber. Okay, so the interest rate, the cyber rate have dropped, okay? About 39.2%, okay? Over the one month period. So if, if the interest rate is low, what will be the predictions? Okay, a lot of people will predict that foreign interest rate will boost the price and sales volume. Is it so? Okay, that's we can evident from the past incident. If you look at the past, I believe that you all can recall in 2003, there's a SAR period. Okay, when the SAR period happened, the interest rate fall. And the interest rate fall, resulting that the sales volume increase after the SAR period. So the sales volume increase in 2004, 2005, right up to 2007. And also the price index, okay, also increased after the SARS period. Similarly, the same evidence happened in 2008 where there's a global financial crisis. So when that happened, interest rate fall, and after the crisis, 2009, 2010, the sales transaction volume pick up and resulting in also the price pick up. So that, that is the prediction. So is it true? Let's look at it. Yes. Okay. Our Reputative Prime Minister, Heng Sui Kiet, 
and came out to warn all the people that tell you that low interest rate okay will affect the property prices and it's really happened now where you can see that the sales volume have picked up and also the price index has increased so this is one of the good factors how about the other one will transaction volume rise after the crisis will it happen will the transaction volume rise after the crisis there's a prediction Okay, transaction volume will recover after the crisis. Yes, good. If you look at the past, during the P and post SAR period, that's way during the SAR is 2003, so it's 2002 to 2007. So if you look at the table on at your left, you know that 2002, there are total 9,485 transactions. But because of SA, okay, you know that, that that time people don't go out, people avoid contact. So 203, the volume or the number of units transacted dropped to 5,156. And in 204, in the recovery state, the, num the unit transacted increased to 5,785. Thereafter, 205, the volume increased by 12 over percent, uh, by 54% to 8,955 and go on to 206 and 207 to shoot out the volume to 14,811. Okay, so really after the crisis, the sales volume will increase. Okay, and if you look at the global financial crisis in 2008, the same thing happened, okay, P and post global financial crisis. So in 2007 to 2010, what is the sales volume? 2007, as I said before, the number of unit transacted is about 14,811. And during the global financial crisis, the volume dropped to 42864. And after the financial crisis, straight away recover back to 14,688 number in 2009 and 2010 increase to 16,292. So the sales volume, the prediction of this circuit breaker of this COVID, okay, the sales volume will increase. It did really happen? Yes, the facts is, the sales volume rebounds after the circuit breaker period. Let's look at the transaction. Okay, you know that circuit breaker is during April to May period. So this two months. So post circuit breaker, our number of unit transacted is in February is 975. In March is 660. And during the circuit breaker, there's only 277 unit. And in May, 486, when people start to get used to virtual tour. And after, immediately after the circuit breaker, in June 2020, the volume increased to 998. In July, increased to 1080. And in August, increased to 1256. So the facts is correct. After the crisis, the transaction volume, okay, increase. How about, will property prices rise after the crisis? Will it happen? Prediction, okay. Property price, property bought during the crisis provide greatest growth opportunity, okay. We can take up a few projects that launch during the SAR period, you can see the pier at Robertson, the Garden Vista, the Eshine, the Stephen Loft. Okay, these are the projects that launch during the SAR period. And you can see that, okay, if you look at the chart on the right, you can see that they enjoy big growth in the prices, okay, after the period, okay. Take one good example. If you can see that the, the pier 
at Robertson. Okay, during that SAR period, people bought in at about six about six hundred dollar per square foot, and now the price shoot up to about one two thousand dollar per square foot. So it enjoy the best growth. So when that's why people always say, okay, 危机就是商机 Okay, so when crisis, that present good opportunity. So look at it. How is our prices happen after the circuit breaker? Yes, according to the price index, the price increase after the circuit breaker period. If you look at it, second、uh, third quarter of two zero two zero, the price increase by zero point eight percent. And fourth quarter of two zero two zero, the price increased by two point one percent. So the fact is, the property prices were appreciate after the circuit breaker period. And what's going to happen? Yes, property prices will still continue the upward trend, and we are still have a few year of runway to go. I must say that. I'm a strong believer in property investment. Okay, I myself have bought quite a number of property. So, what are the most important factor that you need to consider when you do your property investment? So, I can simplify to two factor. One is your time of entry. The other one will be your time of exit. If you are able to control these two. Definitely, you enter the right time and you exit at the right time. You are definitely able to enjoy great appreciations. Today, I also like to introduce this project, okay, called Momentum Park, as highlighted by Alex, okay, in the top, in the earlier talk. You can see that this is the cheaper price of project. In the RCR area, so if you are able to enter at the cheaper price, now you gain the first factor, enter at the right price because this is the cheaper in the RCR area. Later, you will need to control your time or exit. You must sell at your time. Okay, when the value is at the peak, then you sell it. So we enter at the best price, exit at the higher price. Then you really enjoy great appreciation. So this is a little advice I can give to every one of you. Now I will like to pass back to Alex. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Jack Trust, sir. Uh, thanks for your wisdom. I think, uh, definitely, uh, we've all gained uh, a lot. Okay. So I think, uh, thank you so much for your sharing. Uh, so I believe for、uh, everyone here, you guys are learning something. Yeah. So I learned a lot. I think again, uh, thanks for your reminder because, uh, what I want to end this uh session, I think, uh, thanks for the reminder because I think for someone like、uh, Mr. Jack Trust, we invest. For so many properties over so many you know long periods of time, so what I can see something in common is this. Okay, regardless whether is it SARS, regardless whether is it financial crisis, regardless whether is it COVID, I think at any you know crisis, you just wait a while today, you look back, every single property has appreciated. Okay, in terms of investments, ah, don't give me the luxury segment. Ah, we're talking about investment, investable assets. Every single property has made money. Okay, so I think that gives me a lot of confidence in real estate. So as what Mr. Jack Chua highlighted, right? We must buy at the lowest entry price. This is number one, and you know, to me, you have to be able to what rent and wait out for your capital upside gain. So this is the strategy to achieve most in your. Real estate investment, okay. You must buy the right entry price, and then all you do is wait, okay. So this to me, you know, really、uh, gives me a lot of confidence. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Jack Chua, for all your wisdom, okay. So I think with that, we've come to end of the session. I think、uh, please、uh, get back to your real estate salesperson. I believe they'll be able to guide you through which are the most you know valuable units they can enter. So、uh, with that, you know, I leave you back to your.